Hello, welcome to Sutton Hoo National Trust. Today we're filming a series of short little clips looking at some of the key features of the landscape here for the Suffolk Walking Festival. Usually each year we'd lay on several walks across the site, but this year we hope to bring some of the key stories of this unique landscape to you. My name is Josh and I'll be filling you in on some of the details as we go. Enjoy! So here we have the sculpture of the ship. The acid soil here had actually caused the original ship to entirely dissolve. Um, so the actual timbers had long since rotted away, leaving just a fossilised sort of sandy imprint of where the ship once stood. This sculpture is a full scale replica. It's a whopping 27 metres long. It gives you some idea of the incredible scale of the original ship. The centre here marks out where the burial chamber would have been. So the original burial chamber had actually collapsed at some point and actually caused a number of the items in the burial chamber to break up. So this sort of represents as it was discovered in 1939. Of course, I think we've all seen the, the film now. So we know the story of, of Basil Brown and how he actually discovered the ship. If you've visited Sutton Hoo before, you might recognise this. So we are currently in the picnic area, just behind the exhibition hall and the shop building there. What a lot of people don't realise, under our feet here is a much earlier Anglo-Saxon cemetery. We're talking a couple of generations before the Royal Burial Ground. Slightly lower status as well, so it's sometimes nicknamed the Folk Cemetery. So it's home to a number of cremation burials um, scattered all across this area here. We actually do have some of the, uh, some of the original artefacts discovered in those burials on display in the exhibition hall. So then we come into Garden Field. Now it's believed that the cemetery does actually extend some way into this field. We do actually have some ongoing archaeological work taking place. So as part of our National Lottery Heritage Funded project releasing the Sutton Hoo story, um, we've got a team of trained volunteers who are undertaking a geophysical survey. It's going to be quite exciting to see, see what, we, what we discover as any other archaeological evidence lurking underneath our feet here. This was also um, the site where the Bromswell bucket was discovered, so an early Byzantine bucket. Um, the fragments, first fragments were ploughed up here in the 1980s and other fragments were subsequently found after that. Um, and again that is usually on display in the High Hall exhibition building. This is Tranmer House. Tranmer House was formerly the home of Edith Pretty, who actually instigated the archaeological excavation at the Royal Burial Ground. First season was in 1938, followed by a subsequent excavation in 1939, which is when the great ship burial was unearthed by Basil Brown. Tranmer House actually built in 1910. It was originally called Sutton Hoo House. It was designed by a local architect, John Corder, um, held from Ipswich, and the first resident was John Chadwick Lomax. The house was then bought by Edith Pretty and her husband Frank in 1926. Sadly, Edith passed away in 1942. The house was requisitioned by the War Office and for a period in the Second World War it was actually home to land army girls. They actually leave some graffiti behind in the house. Following the war, um, it came home to the Barton family. The Barton family had a farm here and actually had a prize winning herd of Frisian cows. It then passed to the Tranmer family, and the Tranmer family and the Annie Tranmer Charitable Trust actually donated the house and the estate to the National Trust in the late 1990s. Um, and the house was renamed Tranmer House in their honour. If you look at the views from the house, it's not hard to see why Frank and Edith fell in love with this place and bought it all those years ago. It's got spectacular views there across the River Deben. Just about to see Woodbridge in the background as well. It's gorgeous sunshine as the sun starts to go down. Uh, the ground floor of the house is usually open to visitors. Um, the upstairs or houses, meeting rooms up there and also there's three holiday apartments. So you can come and stay and enjoy those views. This is the resting place of what we think of the King Redwald. It was one of the kings of East Anglia during the early Anglo-Saxon period. 
The first mound we come across here, mound two, is actually another ship burial. So this was discovered by Basil Brown in the 1938 excavations. Um, sadly, it had been, been robbed sometime in the Tudor period, leaving just a mass of rusted rivets there. You see a sheep standing on top as well. Um, so there are actually three ship burials in this part of the world, two here at Sutton Hoo and one down the road at nearby Snape. Also worth stating as well, you can actually see the River Deben and Woodbridge from the Royal Burial Ground. Uh, the river is actually one of the key reasons why we think the burial ground is here. If you're sailing past on the river and you look up the hill before all these, uh, these woodlands appeared up here, it would have been quite an open landscape. So if you're burying your dead here, it's sort of a clear, a clear mark of who was in control, who had the power over this part of the world. So the burial ground itself has been subject to three main archaeological campaigns. Um, so the 30s excavations led by Basil Brown, the 1960s excavation of Mound 1 by the British Museum, and a further programme of excavation which explored some other areas of the burial ground by Martin Carver, Professor Martin Carver in the 1980s. Um, one of Professor Martin Carver's, Carver's discoveries was Mound 17. It doesn't really look much like a, a mound today. Um, so it's very flat compared to the rest of the burial ground. But it was actually the resting place of a young warrior and his horse. Again, this one actually managed to survive um, robbing in the Tudor period. Um, when they were grave robbing, they knew that generally the ark was placed within the centre of the burial mound, but this was an unusual burial. Because it had the young warrior and the horse, when they dug down to the centre, they didn't find anything. That's because they dug down between the two, between the two bodies. Um, grave goods here included a sword, belt buckle, etc. We actually have the originals on display in the High Hall exhibition, and a spectacular harness, the horse's harness as well. And straight ahead of us is Mound 1. So that's where the great ship burial was unearthed in 1939. So the nightingales sort of stay here early springtime and quite often in a sort of a spring evening you can hear, hear the song of the male nightingale here in Top Hat Wood before I then head off again sort of July time. Uh, it was also important in the 1939 excavation um, when they were packing up items to remove them for safekeeping at the British Museum. Um, they actually collected leaves and bracken and etc from Top Hat Wood to actually protect the items in their packing cases. And then later on, um, one of the last jobs Battle Brown carried out was, was filling in the trench of the ship. And again, he sort of lined it with hessian and bracken and, and branches just to protect it. Um, which was a, a good job in hindsight because in the 1940s, this was actually used as a military training ground and tanks would have been going up and down the sides of the mounds here. Um, and actually, sadly, um, when the in the 1960s excavation took place, carried out by the British Museum, they did discover that um, the ship imprint had been damaged to some extent. And you can see here the metal marker. These actually mark out the prow and the stern of the ship, one down the other end too. Over there we have the viewing tower. Um, so from there you can get a real sort of appreciation of the relationship between the Royal Burial Ground and the River Deben. Um, so that was built as part of our National Lottery Heritage Funded project, releasing the Sutton Who story. We'll hopefully be opening later this year, um, restrictions permitting. The landscape of the Royal Burial Ground itself is an acid grass and landscape. It's quite important. It's, it's similar to Heathland, but it's not exactly the same. It does, it does have sort of some of the same species, so it's gorgeous. Big Suffolk skies as well on this lovely afternoon. So as we come back towards Mound 2, you might notice these, uh, these funny shapes here marked out by stone. And these are actually later burials, again uncovered by Professor Martin Carver's team in the 1980s and the early 1990s. Uh, it's actually a slightly, late, slightly later period of burials. So these were execution victims. So once this place ceased to be a, a pagan burial site, once Christianity came into this part of the country, um, this was probably seen as a place to bury your undesirable, which didn't want them in consecrated ground. So whether these were, were criminals, possibly, we, we, don't, we don't sadly know their identities, but evidence has actually been found here 
um, or possible site of where a gallows may have been located. So they could have been executed and then buried here. It's not quite the same, same level of respect as the earlier, earlier burials of the site. Mound two, you have to get a wonderful view of both Mound two and Tranmer House. The two are indivisible from each other. Um, so you can just imagine Edith Pretty in her, her sitting room or her, her bedroom, which actually does sort of look in, it does look in this direction, uh, looking out and wondering what was, uh, what was buried in these incredible landscape features. Here we are in Rabbit Field. Got wonderful views down the valley towards Woodbridge behind us, again across River Deben. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this look at some of the key features of the Sutton Hoo landscape. And we hope to see you at Sutton Hoo sometime soon. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.